Hey, y'all. <laughs> welcome, welcome back to Artistic License. My intro did the weird thing again. I guess I'm going to have to like go look at my plugin that I'm using for that and like update it or something. Maybe it has an update. I don't know. It was it did it every time yesterday. It looks like it's going to do it every time today. So that's fun. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Here we go. OK, let me turn my controller back on. So instead of starting from my save state, we're actually starting from here because I didn't need to slow down time. And I wasn't really thinking about that when I was thinking about like what it was we were going to do next cycle. So here's what's up. Here's how we're going to do this. OK, we are going to do a cycle where we kind of play some catch up, get a couple of heart pieces that we haven't quite gotten yet. And the point of this cycle is I want to show you guys about Anju before I show you guys about Anju and Cafe. OK, this Anju and Cafe storyline is the best storyline in Majora's Mask. It spans the entire three days of things that you have to do. It is absolutely amazing. Oh my God. Hello, baby. You're here just in time. Um, it's absolutely amazing. It's, it's my favorite. It's like, so it's so, uh, tear jerking. It's just, it's just fucking beautiful you guys, but to really appreciate it, you have to understand everything about Anju's perspective before you can understand Anju and cafe together. Okay. And also, I just want to acknowledge this is Pride Month, okay? This is Pride Month, and you might say, Karen, why are we doing something so um, hetero during Pride Month? Well, I'm here to share with you that Anju and Cafe are T for T. It's in the, um, you know, the Zelda like compendium, that big old book. Uh, it's canon. So yeah, they're gay, actually. You learned it here. Here we go. Let's go. Okay, so we're not actually going to slow down time like we normally do at this point. Anju and Cafe is the best side quest, yes. And I love it in the manga. I bet the manga version is amazing, beautiful, like just perfection. Now, normally we'd go in and show the Happy Mask Salesman masks that we got during the last round, but we actually cannot do that because the mask that we got was the Giant's Mask. And you can't wear the Giant's Mask outside of the area where it's involved. So, um, so yeah can't do it. So that's why we skipped that this time. Yeah. So we're going to do a couple things. We don't yet have the, um, we don't yet have the heart piece for getting the 5,000 coins in the bank or 5,000 rupees in the bank. So we're collecting up some rupees. We're collecting up some rupees first. It's adorable. It's a shame that it shortened, but it's still very. Oh, it shortened in the manga. OK, so you don't so you don't get to see like all these little sides. Well, I guess that would make sense the way that the manga would be structured. So, yeah, I'm going to show you guys everything. Every Anju and Cafe scene that I know about, I'm going to show it to you guys. I, I want you to get the full the full story. OK, five, three, two, four, one. Yes. Uh, five, three, two, four, one. The manga has to shorten everything, but they showed the most important parts. I mean, that makes sense. That makes sense. And there's so much stuff that you could totally, you could do the Anju and Cafe quest without ever seeing a lot of the things that I'm going to show you guys today. So, like, I'll let you know when we see something that's required versus not required during that quest. But during this cycle, we're actually going to only see, we're just going to see like pre stuff. Like you, we're going to see Anju's life whenever like you don't do anything to help her is what I'm going to show you guys um, today. Or what I'm going to show you guys first before we actually do Anju and Cafe's quest. All right, so we got those rupees. Let's run back. Um, and we're going to need a powder keg. So we're going to go buy a powder keg next. We're going to need that because one of the secret scenes that I want to show you guys actually takes place on Romani Ranch. So if you remember from back when we helped out Romani and Kremia, um, Anju and Kremia are best friends, which means that uh, Kremia and... Um, uh, no, we'll go do the powder cake first. Uh, Anju and Kremia are best friends, which means that Kremia and Romani actually already have relationship 
with Anju's and, and her family. So Anju's family and Romani and Kremia's family are very close. They're very close and, uh, and they have like a lot that they do together. So we are going to repeat some things that we have done before, but it's because I want to show you certain scenes that I did not show back when we did uh, Kremia and Romani storyline. Oh, why did I take that off? I need that. Yeah, we want to buy a powder keg. We will, we will. All right. Tricked you, I'm not actually a Goron. <laughs> I'm a bunny man. He doesn't care, I don't think. I think he's okay with it. All right, so we are gonna get a few more rupees. And this is part of why we're not slowing down time because there's gonna be some waiting. There's gonna be some waiting. So part of what makes this entire series of scenes that you have to see kind of difficult is that there's a lot of hurry up and wait. So there's a lot of points where you're just kind of like going and running. And then there's also a lot of points where you're just waiting around. Okay. So we are actually going to wait around now until 150 when uh, we can get the key to go get another 100 rupees. So we're going to wait for that. And, on, and in the uh, 3DS version of this game, you can actually play the song to skip time uh, and skip to specific hours. So it makes this quest a lot easier. But in the original N64 version, you had to have patience and good timing. So if you want to do other things in between the Anju and Cafe quest, you have to really, really think about your timing and kind of like how you want to do this to accomplish everything within three days. Um, now we're not gonna do that. That's why we're doing this mini cycle where I'm just really showing you about Anju and her day before we do the Anju and Cafe quest because I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna break up the story. I don't, I think that you guys like deserve to have the story like told all the way through without things breaking it up. So we're gonna do those couple of heart pieces that we still need to get during this cycle where I just show you about Anju because there's far less scenes there. And then we're gonna do Anju and Cafe, all the scenes, you know, back to back as much as we can, with of course some of the waiting in between. So we're waiting until 1.50. Now, right here, at almost 11, Anju goes back, and let's see what she's doing. She's cooking. Okay. So she's making some food there. And you can talk to her at this point and it's not gonna mess things up. Yeah. We used to be a cafeteria, but after my father died, the room rentals that were part of our service became our main focus. We're just a small inn with only two rooms, but people from all over come here at this time of year. See the performers practicing outside? The second floor bunk room guests are very spirited at night with songs and dancing. The customer coming this afternoon will be staying next door to them, so I hope it'll be all right. So, she's talking about that Goron customer that we already know about, that we're about to get rupees from. Mm -mm. Okay, so she's tasting her cooking with her chopsticks, but we're just gonna kind of hang out and creepily watch her. Um, okay, so she's done with her food, and if you remember from other cycles that we've done, we know where she's going to be taking this food. It looks it looks pretty good to me. Like it's hot. It looks like rice and soup. Um, so anyway, she takes it to her grandmother in there, and uh, and we know kind of some of the stuff that goes on there. So we're actually just going to walk back to the front here, and we're going to wait. We're just going to wait for Anju to come back because when she comes back, we can actually talk to her and get the key. Now you don't want to talk to her when she's at the counter before she goes to cook. If you do that, then she's you're already going to have answered her question about whether you've rented a room or not, and it's like it's not going to work out. So the way to get the key is you have to wait until she comes back and she's standing at the desk during this time and talk to her as the Goron. But you guys remember and you already knew all that.
And she should be coming back in just a little bit. I hope everyone is having an amazing, magical June. Um, I am very happy about the summer getting here. It's like warming up. I was kind of over the cold. And we've had some hot days now, and it's been kind of nice. I, I like them at the moment. I'm not tired of them yet. I didn't know that. Yeah, I want to try to share with you guys, like, everything. Because I feel like a lot of the uh, playthroughs of this game that are online right now don't really fully explain everything. So I'm going to share with you everything that I know about this couple. Like, they're loved, but a lot of people, I think, rush through the game. Okay, welcome to Stockpot Inn. Um, did you have a reservation? You do have a reservation. That's good. Mr. Link, is it? One moment, please. Mr. Link, I have you down for an afternoon arrival. Your room is our knife chamber on the second floor. Here's your key. All right, we got the room key. Okay, we apparently had a room reservation. So there are more scenes in relation to the room reservation, but we're not going to worry about them right now. We're really just doing this during this cycle to get the, uh, get the rupees. It was way too warm yesterday. I got a little overheated. I couldn't participate. Oh, no. I get overheated sometimes, too. Um, but it's not too bad if I don't go outside too much. Okay, so we got more rupees. So now, that was how many rupees we really needed to grab for the moment. So let's go deposit our rupees. Hello, Mr. Mailman. We're going to talk to you later. Just, just you wait. Well... It's not waiting for you. It's actually resetting for you. <laughs> okay, so let's go depause it. But come, uh, come July and August, we'll probably start having those days that are too hot for me as well. But right now it's kind of like nice not having any cold. All right, so deposit those. Yes, we're gonna give you that much. Now we're up to um, 4,400. All right. Let's, um, we do need to go, let's go out into Termina because I need to replenish my magic. Yes, 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 I know. Thank you, thank you. There we go. I get overheated very quickly. Normally it isn't that bad when it's only like 23 degrees outside, but it went from 18 to 23 overnight. Oh, wow. Um, and I didn't realize and didn't drink enough before horse riding. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I, 23 degrees is, like, that's hot, right? We don't use, um, Celsius here, obviously, so I'm not, like, as familiar with what that means, but if I understand it right, that's pretty hot. Whee! Okay. Oh, and we're gonna need arrows. Do, did we just pick up any arrows? Yes, we did just pick up some arrows. Okay. That's really all we needed to do, because we're gonna get some more in a second. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna go to Akana. It's hot. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go to um, Akana Canyon. 73.5, okay. Yeah, then that would, that would start to get hot. 70s is not hot, in my personal opinion, but from for where you are relatively, that uh, that does sound warm. Yeah, being dehydrated sucks. All right, so we need to do some swimming. We need to do some swimming, so we are going to put on our Zora mask. And let's go swimming, let's go swimming. Whee! So we're going to come over here. And we did do the beginning of this in the last cycle, but we didn't really have time to finish it. So we want to finish it and get the prize for finishing it. Get up there. Come on. There we go. And we're going to come in here. And we're actually going to finish this little dungeon this cycle. Okay, now if you do walk in here without any magic or arrows, you're going to get some from these pots. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just wanted more. Give me more. Okay, now we have to light arrow the sun. Hey, 
and go in here. <laughs> it seems so how you have managed to send the Akana's wandering spirits into peace. But outside of Akana, there are still swarms of wandering spirits with lingering regrets. The ones in this room want to meet you again and have been waiting here for quite a while. Go see them if you feel like it. I'm sure they'll welcome you. <laughs> okay, we are going to go fight um, the two that we fought before. So... Does anybody remember what's in this room over here? About to find out. It is <gasps> Dino Foes. Got you. Excuse you, Mr. Jumping Bean. Hi. That's not very nice to jump around like that. Where's the other one? There you are. Yeah, got him. And the big reason we deposit our deposited our rupees is in each of these rooms, you also get another hundred rupees when you defeat the enemy. Yay. Wee. 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 Oh. First night. First night. Okay, now this one. It's this bitch. Another Wizrobe. So we're gonna have to fight him again. I think this is the last time we'll fight a Wizrobe in this game. Yes, got it. It's a shame Lizzie isn't here to enjoy, enjoy your voice. Lizzie's not here. Oh, uh, is Lizzie doing something with her fam? Like um, her dad or something? Obviously, you're her fam. I thought that was weird, a little weird when I said it. Oh, he ran in. I imagine a lot of people play this game totally miss this section of the map. Probably. It's very, very easy to miss. Very, very easy to miss. Oh my god. I'm not close enough. Ah, I missed it. I was trying to light arrow him, but I wasn't targeting. Boom. All right, another hundred rupees. Yes, hubby took them to visit his mom and dad. Oh, when he got home from work. So I get to chill and do RP replies. Oh my God, I love that for you. It's nice having some adult time, huh? And you know, if Lizzie really likes this sort of stuff, um, of course the VODs are on YouTube and I can recommend you some um, Let's Players that I think are actually not, uh, oh my gosh that I think are actually like uh, pretty okay for kids, you know? Get up there. I didn't mean to do all that jumping. Okay, so we got those two down. We're gonna come back because I don't wanna miss the aliens. I don't wanna miss the aliens. Okay, so we're actually gonna go to Clock Town and we are gonna deposit those rupees and then we're gonna go over and uh, hang out with Romani for tonight. She wants to she wants to hang out with Grasshopper. All right, here we go. I don't want to miss the aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to miss them. I don't want to miss them. You know they want to see me. Okay, yes, we're going to make a deposit. Yes. Okay, we are up to 4,600. We're getting very close. All right. All right, we're going to Milk Road. <clears throat> I definitely put the pods on for... Oh! Oh, I don't know why I didn't think of that. <laughs> well, you know, it's probably just not on your mind, you know? I've always wanted the blue milk. <laughs> yes. Take that, bushes. Okay. Anyway, stop fucking around, Karen. 
Um, let's get our powder keg out. Run away, sir, run away. Rock a boom. Boom. All right. Let's get in here. And let's get some stuff from these bushes. So these bushes will give you lots and lots of arrows if you walk in here without very many arrows. Rolling into the crate up there will also give you arrows, which is what, like, the advice that you'll find online. But, um, that bush, that, that little bush area is way better. So if you just come in here and you slash those when you first, before you even get started, like, it's better. Epona! Hey, Epona! Hey, it's been a second. How are you? How are you, Epona? Yeah? Doing good? I'm glad. We're gonna fight some aliens. Whee! So now we're gonna wait till 2 a.m. to fight some aliens. Welcome in, by the way. Um, oh, let me scroll back up so I can find your name. Uh, Rickerden! Rickerden, my name is Karen Terry. Um, I am a variety streamer. We focus on games with good stories and we talk about uh, story analysis in games, um, you know, ludo narrative, co uh, cognizance and dissonance and things of that nature. Um, we also do uh, media uh, analysis podcast, which actually next week. Yeah, next week is our Catching Fire episode. We're going through Hunger Games right now. Me and my co-host are going through Hunger Games. So we're going to do analysis of um, the second book, Catching Fire, next week on Saturday. We do those on Saturdays, like once a month-ish, depending. Um, and yeah, we're doing this 100% playthrough of Majora's Mask. We're almost done. After Anju and Cafe today, the finale will be next week. And, uh, and then we'll do an, a new game. We'll do like a little short interim game before we do another big game. But yeah, that's the whole point of my channel is to share, uh, to share good stories with you guys and to share with you like what makes a good story in different mediums. Cause it, it's different depending on whether it's like a game versus a TV show or movie or book or whatever it is. The one you mentioned looks awesome. Are you talking about for the next game for Miss Three? That's what we're gonna play next. We're gonna play Miss Three Exile, and um, and it's good actually. We're gonna make that argument. Seeing a pony reminded me yesterday the horse I was riding started walking uh, odd halfway through the lesson. I got so worried. Are they okay? Is the horsey okay? Yeah, it's good. Okay, it's good. It gets a lot of flack. It gets a lot of flack, but um. But it's actually, it's a good game, actually, and I'll, I'll explain why when we play it. Yeah, what was wrong with your horsey, Koneko? Or the horsey? You said the horse I was riding, so I assume it's not your horsey. The medicine's almost here. I had to get some, um, some antibacterial that's gel that's appropriate for kitty cat eyes, because Lady's having trouble with her eyes again, like she did when she was a kitten. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that for a while and get her eyes, eyes better. I'm not entirely sure. I think he pulled his shoulder somehow while cantering. He's a bit jumpy and must have simply stepped wrong. Mood. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. Karen, why did, why are you walking funny, Karen? Why are there bruises on your legs? Why does my knee feel like that? Oh, I stepped wrong one time. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm an old lady. <laughs> so uh mood on that horse. Oh, I need to save state. Just in case I fuck up the aliens. Just in case I fuck up the aliens and we have to start it over. I don't think I will, but just in case. Okay, now we're, we have a save state. After 30, uh, right? Like after 30 stuff just like happens and you're like, but why? Mystery, no idea. Why are you dying? I slept wrong. Slightly sh <laughs> like, why does, why does my head and shoulders feel like they're going to explode? Oh, I slept wrong. <laughs> yeah, because we're doing fast aliens this time. I'm not going to slow down time. We're going to do fast aliens. So there's a small chance I might fuck it up. But if I do, 
then you guys can just see what happens whenever the cows get abducted. But hopefully I won't mess it up. And we'll be okay. Wee, wee, wee. It's almost two. It's two. It's time. It's time. There she is. Hey, Romani. Grasshopper's here. Grasshopper's here. Let's go. Aliens. Aliens. Honestly, I'm happy you started walking odd so quickly. Some horses will push through the pain and make their injury worse. Oh, no. That sucks. They're here, you guys. Look at those bitches. We're going to get them. I'm going to shoot them in the face. I was helping Krista with his kickboxing the other day. Wrecked my back. Oh, wrong spot. Over here. Yeah. That sucks, noms. Oh, bad aim. Got him. What's for dinner tonight, Karen? Anything good? Hamburgers! We're having hamburgers. It's gonna be delicious. Oh my gosh. I can't aim. I still can't aim. Sun's coming up soon. Get out my face, stupid bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> Almost messed it up. Morning time. I had hamburger yesterday. It was very yummy. Yeah, we're having hamburgers. We did it. We won. Thank you. Thanks to you. The cows are giving thanks, too. It's almost time for my sister to get up, so I have to go back to bed. See you later, you little hero. Aw, thanks, Romani. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay, so we saved the ranch from aliens. All right, now... Um, I don't think there's anything. <laughs> I added that for pride. What do you think, Koneko? <laughs> uh, okay, wait, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, I was getting on my ocarina. I got distracted by the flag. Okay, um, I'm just looking at my notes, making sure there's nothing else I wanted to do here. I don't think there is. I think... Let's see. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. I had to make that. No one had pushed two gifts, uh, two gifts together like that. No one had done the, the, you know, Eddie Izzard, do you have a flag with a pride flag? So I was like, I have to put that into the world and make that exist. All right. So we're going to go back to Ikana now, and we're going to finish. We're going to finish up those, uh, the two other bosses in there that we need to beat up. Scary moon. Whee! Oh. Almost day two. When you don't slow down time, like these days go by so fast. Oh my gosh. Get up there, Macau. Get up there. 
There we go. Dawn of the second day. All right, let's bust these jars again, get some more errors. All right. And then... We gotta do this again. Oh. If I could aim. There we go. Gonna lurk and work on replies? Do it, noms. It's gonna be the best replies ever. All right. Next room is this one over here. And we have not shown off this room yet. So guess who's in here? Guess which of them bitch asses is in here? I bet you can't guess. Um, it's another annoying one. We have to look up for him. Oh my gosh, look at that. Hello. Trigger. Why isn't it triggering? Did I not walk far enough into the room? There we go. We have to beat up this eyeball again. Have a delicious dinner, Koneko. Tell me how it was when you get back. All right. So just like before, we want to slice slice some balls off of him. He has too many balls. Um, he doesn't need so many. So we got to slice some off of him. So we can open up the hole. Okay. Get off there. Die. Die, stupid balls. I think this guy is so annoying. Get out of here. I need more arrows. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm I'm so slow at this. There's it is a technique with um with bombing that you can use that's like apparently way more effective to get the bubbles off of him, but I always fuck it up. Like I can't really seem to do it. Did I just hit him? I was trying to hit Bubbles, but I think I just hit him, actually. That's good. Oh, yeah, I was hitting him. I guess I have enough hearts that I should just, like... I should just, like, walk up to him and, like, get him. Instead of trying to arrow him to death. He doesn't care. Am I getting him this way, though? Or am I just getting the bubbles? I feel like I'm just getting the bubbles. But I did get two hits on him somehow. Those didn't hit, for sure. Come here, sir. I'm just trying to contact you about your car's extended warranty. Um. Oh, there's bubbles over there. Get out of here, bubbles. Oh, I definitely hit him that time. In the eyeball. Come here. Oh. <laughs> okay, this isn't working. He's got his eyeball closed. Open it. Open it. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of arrows. <laughs> okay. That was the highest hit on him, I think. There's another hit. There we go. Got him. Finally. And we get 
another hundred rupees. There we go. Okay, I feel like he takes the longest. Um, so I think we have plenty of time to do the next one, but I'm just going to save. Save state. There we go. I don't want to miss the other scene. All right. Last of the four. Last of the four is this dude here. And here we go. A Garo Master. Annoying little bitch. Where are you? There. Don't fire me! I'm trying my best to do a good job. I don't want to be fired. Ugh. Ugh. I walked right into that one. Oh my god. I dodged you. Didn't dodge you that time. Okay, one more hit, I think. And then he's gone. Yep. Don't pull out your bomb in my face. Silly thing. All right. I think we still have time. Another silver rupee! Okay, let's get Daddle out of here. <laughs> you really are an amazing person, Link. It seems you've somehow managed to heal their souls. Maybe I shall vanish soon myself. Well then, <laughs> And here we go! Our prize! And it's like this giant chest on this tiny little thing, so you have to like walk around to the right side of it. If you walk around to the back of it, Link won't open it. Just, just so you know, there's not enough room for him. Piece of heart. Okay, we got a piece of heart. Heck yeah, restore all our hearts. Now, Link, fill up your hearts. All right, so now we can go back to Clock Town. We have a scene to watch. So Anju, on the second day, after she goes and feeds her grandmother, instead, instead of going um, back into, uh, back to the desk, she does something else instead. She comes down here to the laundry pool and uh, let's talk to her and see what she has to say. Excuse me, have you seen a man in this area? He looks like this. Okay, so she has a mask of, of this man. He disappeared about one month ago with his wedding ceremony mask. I'm actually afraid to meet him and to hear the reason why he wanted to disappear. It might be because of m me. There are only two days until the carnival. Should I wait? Okay. So this is called Andrew's Despair, this scene. And in most playthroughs of Majora's Mask, a lot of people won't even see this because you have to come to the laundry pool here in the afternoon when it's raining. Otherwise, you will not see it. All right, we are going to go and deposit our rupees now that we have learned the tragedy that Anju is facing. Anju's fiance disappeared about a month ago. And she doesn't know where he went. He has not written to her. Um, they have lost each other. And she's unsure what that means for their wedding that's supposed to be happening uh, right after the Carnival of Time. So they're supposed to exchange masks at the Carnival of Time. Um, as a symbolic gesture, and then they're gonna they're gonna get married the next morning. That's what's supposed to happen. All right, we're at forty eight hundred on the rupees. So next, what we're gonna do? 
Oop. Yeah, we're gonna go back to Milk Road. And I think, I think you can talk to these guys at this time. I'm not 100% sure, so this next thing I wanna show you might not work. We're gonna test it and see. So several streams ago, we got the um, Gorman Brothers mask. And uh, this mask doesn't really do a whole lot, but there is one, a, well, a couple of things that you can do with it. So I wanna show off this scene here, the circus leader's mask. Um, let's put it on and let's talk to him. Oh, that mask. That's our middle brother, big bro. So he's gone into the world of entertainment. That younger brother of mine is really struggling. Compared to what he does to what we do? No, no, no. Um, and the things that we, the Gorman brothers, have done. Uh, we're the notorious Gorman brothers. We can't get all sappy over stuff like this. I'm sorry, but take that mask off. I can't get anything done when you gaze at me with that mask on. Okay, so when you when you look at him with the circus leader's mask, he will uh, he will behave like that. And you can only see that scene with the circus leader's mask. All right, so we are going to next go back into Romani Ranch. And we want to do this before it gets too late on day two. Um, I'm going to let you guys listen to the rain for a second, though, because I got to pee. Okay, I had tea, I had tea before, right before stream again, so I got to pee. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. We've still got plenty of time. Okay, so back on Romani Ranch. It's raining, of course, because it's the second day. But there is a scene that we can do. A little scene that, um, that most people will not see in their playthroughs. Just like the Anju scene that we just saw. Her despair. And um, that is coming in here, but I think... Oh, we have to make it night first. Okay. So we're going to put the Gorman mask on. Oh, that's not that's not the right song. I didn't mean to do Song of Soaring. I didn't mean to do Song of Soaring. Okay. Not that one. Sorry. Not that one. Okay, what is the one? Uh, let me get the notes. I need to... All right, so we're gonna go to the night of the second day. We're gonna skip a little bit of time. All right, the rain has stopped, it's nighttime now. You can see Kremi is over there getting ready to go. But we're gonna come in here first and we're gonna talk to Romani. So we're first gonna talk to her just normally. So this is probably what people ha may have seen if they tried to come talk to her. Thanks for helping last night. The cows are doing well thanks to you, and they're putting out a lot of milk about last night. It's a secret from my sister. I don't want to worry her. Okay, so that's what she tells you. But if you put on a mask and talk to her, this is what she says. Is that a carnival mask? Oh, that's nice. Romani wishes that she could go to the Carnival of Time just once. I've never been. My sister always tells me that I'll be an adult someday. That's fine for her. She gets to go to town to make deliveries. Romani knows. My sister Kremia has someone in town she likes. But that person will get married the day of the carnival. It's hard for my sister going into town. Okay, so who do we think she's talking about? She is talking about Andrew's fiancé. So, Andrew's fiancé... Um, is somebody that Anju loves and somebody that Kremia loves. Okay, the next thing I want to show off... Hello, Almanax! Hello! 
Um, the next thing I want to show off is if you do this quest with Kremia with the circus leader's mask on. How are you doing to Almanax, by the way? Um, we are we are doing a little like kind of pre stuff, making sure everybody knows the setup for Anju and Cafe before we do the actual Anju and Cafe quest. Get ready to rumble. That's right. Oh, good evening. I'm going to town to deliver milk. Would you like a ride? Yes. So if you have the Gorman mask on when you do this ride, we've done this scene before, but we did it the normal way. So I'll show you what happens when you do it with the Gorman mask. That's great. Tonight, I'm kind of lonely. I welcome company. So this scene isn't any different than before for this intro part where she's talking. I guess it's been a while now since our father died. I'm trying to take care of the ranch, but things have been getting rushed lately. The cows always seem bothered and frazzled, and I'm finding broken bottles everywhere. Who's doing it? I don't know. My sister Omani's been worried too. She's practicing using a bow, saying it's to stop the ghosts. Say, what are those townsfolk saying about the moon? It's bigger than before, isn't it? The words go by so fast in this scene. In town, I have a friend. Her name's Anju. Anju, the day after tomorrow is her wedding. I wonder if it'll fall, that thing. So... Kremia is not dealing just with the moon falling like everyone else is. She's also dealing with the fact that her crush is getting married to her best friend. So Kremia's story is particularly tragic. What? The road. Boy, get your bow ready. I'm glad you're doing well, Almanax. Um, this quest that we're doing today, the Anju and Cafe quest, is uh, my absolute favorite in all of Majora's Mask. I mean, it's a lot of people's favorites, but I love it. I'm going to show everything. I'm going to show everything. First Milk Road's blocked by a boulder, and now we have to take this detour through ugly country. Are you ready, boy? I'm gonna try to get us through here as fast as I can. If any pursuers come from behind, chase them off with your arrows. They may be after my cargo of milk bottles. Do you understand? Yep, I understand. Thanks, I'm relying on you. If we can get through here, I'll have a big thanks for you. And there they are. Now, since I'm wearing their brother's mask, you saw how they reacted to it just from talking to them. So they see this mask, they feel guilty, um, they're just gonna follow you like this. They will not actually try to attack the milk bottles. They feel too much shame about seeing their brother's crying face and what that means um, for being a Gorman. So they uh, they won't attack the milk bottles and you can just do this. Actually, this is an, another thing that you could do every single cycle, potentially. Now you have to do the aliens to get to this. So it's not usually worth doing, but you could do it every single cycle. And I'll show you what the repeated reward is after you've gotten the heart piece like we did before. But yeah, you just watch. You just watch as they run around what's essentially the Gorman racetrack. So, yeah. <clears throat> Get comfy. Because we're just going to watch. <laughs> and that's it. If you have the circus leader's mask, that's all you have to do. You win. So you could wait to do that quest until much later if you wanted a really easy time of doing it. Mr. Barton was happy to get his first delivery in quite a while. Thank you. You're pretty cool. This isn't very big, but accept my thanks. <gasps> we got the hug! Oh my gosh, we got the hug! Oh my gosh, you did it! You helped Kremia! You feel warm and fuzzy inside. Ah, you could get used to this. I'm sorry about giving you only this. You already have Romani's mask, don't you? It's proof of Milk Bar membership. Chateau Romani is a little expensive, but please try it at the bar. Okay, so because we got the hug, we actually didn't get the reward. Um, you're supposed to get rupees. <laughs> You're supposed to get rupees, and I was um I was banking on that. It's 200 rupees. I was banking on that to finish out the rupee quest. Um, so, <laughs> so we actually need to farm rupees a little bit 
So, uh, so let's do that. <laughs> let's do that. Um, I think if I kill these bubbles with light arrows, I can get rupees a decent amount. Uh, trying to see. Yeah, this will give me purple rupee. So let's try to get 200 rupees right now. Stupid bubble. Making me cursed. Can't curse me twice, bitch. Yeah. But I'm glad we got the hug cut scene because that scene is so cute and uh, it's random. You don't always get it. Most of the time you get the 200 rupees. But if you get the hug, that's like reward enough, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. We got the 200 rupees anyways that, uh, that she would have given us from shooting bubbles. All right, let's deposit those rupees. <clears throat> Over with the banker. I don't really need my sword, but like the flashing blue is kind of bothering me. I might do the Song of Storms in a minute to get rid of it. All right, let's take a look at you. Yes, we have 4,800. So here's the 200 more that we need. Yes, we're giving 200. What, you're really gonna give me that much? Yes, I'm a rich little guy. All right, okay. What's this? You've already saved 5,000 rupees? Well, little guy, you can't take any more deposits. Sorry, this is all I can give you. What, we got a piece of heart, okay. Sweet, so those were um, basically the two heart pieces that we hadn't quite gotten yet that we needed to get. So, oh, somehow I'm not cursed anymore. Okay, I guess, whatever, I guess I've just patient and waited long enough. All right, so now that we've done that, we are actually going to go back to Romani Ranch. And there's one other scene during this cycle that I want to show you that's important for Anju's story and what happens to her. So you know that we can find certain characters on the third night if you look for certain things, like if you know where to find them um, or they're, they're doing different things or whatever. So what I am going to show you next is what happens to Anju on the night, the third night. So we're going to skip to the third night. Okay, it's dawn. Let's make it the third night time. So remember, on the night of the carnival, Andrew's supposed to be getting married. So, what's supposed to be happening for Andrew is that Cafe shows back up and the two of them exchange their masks as she talked about. And then they um, they have their wedding the next morning. That's what's supposed to happen. So let me show you what actually happens to Anju. There she is, with her mother and with her grandmother. Perhaps I was wrong, but he said so. The morning of the ceremony, he'd come meet me in my room. I promised him I would wait, but already it's too late, isn't it? I've been a little harsh on Anju, but it's fine this way. Right now, surviving is the important thing. Oh, Tortoise, you're late. 
Tomorrow is another early day, so good night. I'll read you a story tomorrow. So they wait out the moon crash here at um, at the ranch. Now, the moon falls in town, so they probably survive. Um, but the town that they've grown up in and known all their life is gone. And then if you come here at this time, this is where you'll find Romani and Kremia. Let's talk to them, too. Oh, good evening. <laughs> We're milking cows tonight. It's Chateau Romani. It's the first time I get to drink it. Until now, my sister's always said, wait till you're an adult. But why now? <laughs> You've become an adult now, Romani. I see it in you. I'm acknowledging it. And does Romani get a mask, too? Well, yes, I'll make one for you. Sleep with me in my bed tonight, okay, Romani? Yes, sister. Okay, so if you remember from what we did before, what we know so far, Chateau Romani is heavily implied to be alcoholic. You have to be an adult to get into the bar where they serve Chateau Romani. Kremia is giving her sister a little bit of alcohol because she doesn't know what it's going to be like in the morning. She doesn't know if they're going to live. She doesn't know if they do live, if there will be much of a life for them after this. She just doesn't know. She doesn't know what's going to happen. It's just all that she knows is that when she looks up at the sky here, the moon is gigantic. We look here. There it is. It's it's massive. It's going to fall, obviously. Everyone's scared. Her best friend and her family are just in the other house with them. This is what she's facing. So this is what we have. Now, that's everything that happens to Anju if you do not really interfere with her storyline. So what we are going to do next is we are going to reset time. And we're going to interfere with her storyline. We're going to make things better for Anju. Welcome back, by the way, Kaneko. Welcome back. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to return to Dawn of the First Day. Here we go. 72 hours remain. Now, the very first thing to note on this quest is if we wait here, we'll see somebody that has very suspiciously purple hair like the mask that Anju showed us. Like, doesn't that hair look kind of familiar? Now, we can't really see if his face is the same shape or anything. And of course, the mask didn't have eyes. But this looks like him, right? This looks like Cafe. Now, he mails a letter. He won't talk to you. No matter what you do, you try to speak to him like... He simply won't, okay? So that's the first thing that we know. The next thing that we need to find out is what we can do to get him to talk to us. So we're going to come over here. And we're going to go up to the mayor's house. Now, you guys have to remember back to like the second episode, <laughs> like the second episode that we did of this game, okay, to know what to do next. But we need to go in here and we need to talk to Madame Aroma again. If you remember, Madame Aroma is Cafe's mother. Okay, so we know what Cafe looks like. We know he is here in Clocktown. And we know that Madame Aroma and the mayor are his parents. Okay, so we're going to wait until the mayor's office opens at 10 a.m. And we're going to talk again to Madame Aroma now that we've progressed farther in the game. All right, you can only have this conversation with Madame Aroma once you've progressed to a certain point. Um, like you have to have gotten, you have to have gotten pretty far into the game before talking to her will like trigger all of the events that we're about to trigger. Because when we talked to her before, we didn't, we didn't trigger what we're about to trigger. Like you're gonna see it's ever so slightly different than what we saw before. Some of the scenes are scenes that we've seen before, but some of, and some of them are not. So we're about to, we're about to watch them when 10 a.m. rolls around. What'd you have for dinner, Koneko? Was it delicious? <clears throat> I 
And again, if you're playing the DS version, instead of waiting around, you'll want to do the Song of Double Time to like skip to the particular hour. Like this is, we're waiting for um, 10 a.m. basically for the mayor's office to open up. It was, it was an oven dish with potatoes, bacon, and bits of minced, minced meat and chicory. Oh my God. Well, you said potatoes and bacon. Those are two of my favorites. So it sounds like it was really delicious. I love me some good, good potatoes and bacon. <clears throat> All right, Gorman comes by right at 10, just like we already know about. And we're going to go in right behind him. Okay, we're going to talk to Madame Aroma before he gets here. Oh dear, are you on a field trip? Are, or are you the expert person finder I hired? Yes, 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 I say, you have the face of a pro. The characteristics of a person I want you to find. Yes, yes, I know them. The person I want you to locate is my son, Cafe. You know him, don't you? You don't, really. He disappeared about a month ago. It's terrible. I'm so very worried. I can't get food down my throat and I've lost five pounds. You haven't anything though. Oh dear. Well, could you look for him? Yes, we could look for him. Oh my, of course. You're an expert. Well, I'm counting on you. All right, we've got Cafe's mask. Now we can actually start this quest. So this event that we just triggered right here is a required event. You have between the 10 a.m. and noon to talk to her and trigger it, okay? You have to do this event. It's not, um, it's not optional. Okay, so uh, while he makes his way in here, we're actually gonna come in here. And this was another thing that I showed you guys in episode two, but I'm gonna show it to you now as well because it's directly connected to this quest. And I'd asked you to remember it before, so we're gonna remind everybody. Cafe's diary. The wedding ceremony is soon. It might be early, but I finished my wedding mask. I wonder if Andrew's made hers. She tends to do things at the last minute, so probably not. There's a gathering of the fellows at the milk bar tonight. I plan to show off my wedding mask and talk about my sweetheart as best as I can. So that's Cafe's diary. So you get from this that he didn't run away on purpose. He wants to marry Anju. His mask is already done. He's like pre-planned. He's ready for this wedding. Okay. So whatever's going on with him, whatever he was mailing, whatever was like causing him to not want to talk to you, like that is not on purpose. Okay. It's not. Now this next scene is an optional scene, but you can get a little bit more of what's going on if you talk to Gorman here when all three of them are together. Now this is a scene that we have seen before um, and uh, and it's not uh, it's not required. So if you don't trigger the scene, you can still do the quest, but we're, we're gonna do it. Madame Aroma, I am Corman. It has been some time. Thank you for letting us perform at this year's Carnival of Time. Oh dear me, Gorman, there's a problem. Meaning? The opening performance I've asked you to do. Oh yes. Uh, they've canceled just now. Oh, what is this? Allow me to explain. Oh, excuse me. I am to work at this year's show, or that was the plan. I am Toto, manager of the Zora Band, the Indigo Goes. He arrived this morning. Actually, there's been an unusual accident in Great Bay, and due to this unusual accident, Lulu, the diva of the Indigo Goes, has lost her voice. Why? Why? The details are quite long, so I'll spare you, at any rate. I must cancel our performance at this year's Carnival of Time. See? Then this means the Gorman Troop's job is... It's off. But, but, but that's... That's all, Gorman. There's always next year. I'm busy with other matters. Cafes must be looking like the default mother-in-law troop. <laughs> okay, so that's an optional event that you can see. You can see it between 11 and 11.30. So very brief. The next thing that we are going to do um, is optional as well. So this is another optional scene that we have already seen, but we're going to watch it again so that you can see how it connects to all the various events. So if you come into the stock pot in, you remember from what we just saw, you can see Anju cooking. She's cooking. Okay. So we'll talk to her. Oh, we missed it. Okay. Well, anyway, she's cooking. You guys know because we just did it. 
about what she says, and then she brings the food into her grandmother's room over here. And if you remember, here's about her grandmother's diary. Granny's diary. It was my granddaughter who brought, who cooked again today. Putting that to the lips shortens the life. I thought of a way to get by without eating. I'll try it tomorrow. I just hope I'm not caught. Okay. So, um, so you have to come in here into the grandmother's room between 12 and 12.15. So very short to witness this event. And it is optional. You do not have to do it. Okay. So we're going to talk to them. Oh, Tortoise, I've already had lunch. Grandmother, I'm Anju. Tortoise is my dad. And you haven't had lunch yet. I've already had lunch. Now be quick and take that away. Not eating's bad for you. Please eat. Didn't I say I already ate lunch, Tortoise? Impossible child. Then don't eat my food. I give up. Who? Who? Oh, 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 would you like to read? Would you like me to read a story? Okay, so that's an optional scene that you can view between 12 and 12.15. The next scene is required. Okay, this is the same thing that we just did before with getting the room key from the Goron. Okay, we have to do this. So, um, okay. So now we have to do, uh, we have to do the Goron. Oh, wait, no, I lied. This one's required. You do have to do this one. You do have to do the Goron mask one. So once she gets back, we're gonna talk to her. We're gonna get the key. We don't need the rupees anymore, but we still need to get the key. I can hear your footsteps, Anju. Come on, girl. Poor thing walks so slow. So this particular event you can do anytime between 150 and 350. Okay, so you have until 350 to do this particular event. And it is required. There she is. Welcome to the Stockpot Inn. Um, did you have a reservation? Oh, you do have a reservation. That's good. Mr. Link, is it? One moment, please. Mr. Link, I have you down for an afternoon arrival. Your room is our knife chamber on the second floor. Here's your key. Okay, so we got the room key. Yes, we had a reservation. Please relax. Okay. So then, what we need to do is wait for the postman. He comes in right after that. So the postman is here. Um, this is at, uh, let's see, 210. So we're going to talk to them, and you get another scene. This is optional. You don't have to watch the postman deliver the letter. Uh, um, oh, what is this? Yeah. I have delivered this to you. Uh, wait. This letter, where did you... Yeah. From the post box. That, that's not what I mean. From the post box where? Yeah. From the post box somewhere. Yeah. That's not what I mean. <sighs> Okay, so he gives her the letter, and then he leaves. All right. So then after he delivers the letter, what you need to do is utilize our new mask. Our new mask for a new scene, okay? So now we're going to talk to Anju like this. <gasps> You're looking for Cafe. I have a request. Cafe, I, I have a clue that will help you find him. Tonight at 11.30, please come to our kitchen. We'll talk then. Okay, so she has a clue. She has something to tell me, but she doesn't want to talk about it right now. We have to come back at nighttime. Okay, so you have to do that event as well. You can do that event as soon as the postman leaves at 2.10, um, and you have all the way until 8 p.m., okay, to do that event. You just have to find Anju and talk to her with uh, Cafe's mask on. Now, um, because it's funny, we're going to wait a little bit longer here at, uh, at the inn. We're going to hang out a little bit longer. I want to see our Goron friend come in that we stole the room from um, and, uh, and see what he has to say. Uh, you don't have to talk to the Goron. Like, you can just move on from here if you want to. But 
but we're gonna wait for him. What's up, lady? Hmm, oh, well, this won't work. No, that's too basic. So I remember we helped those ladies with their dance moves um, at, uh, at nighttime, because they're out dancing, we teach them the new dance. That was also back in like episode two. All right, the Goron shows up at about 4.10. This is another one where we, you only have like a few minutes. It's like 4.10 to like 4.20 to initiate this. So as soon as he walks in, we'll do it. There he is. What's up, my dude? I took your room. Terribly sorry. There's no vacancies today. We're booked solid with reservations. A murder reservation. The name is Linkgoro. Mr. Linkgoro? I don't have a reservation under that name. There's one close to that, but... What? Really, Linkgoro? Well, it's nice weather, so I'll just sleep outside, Goro. I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so, as you know, we find him outside. Uh, and he t warns us that rain is coming the next day, and then, of course, it does rain the next day. So now what we're gonna do... Just to save a little bit of time, we're going to skip over to the first night. Hi, Jacob. How's it going? <laughs> yes, we, we stole his room. We're terrible. He has to sleep outside now um, because of us. How have you been, by the way? How's it going? All right. So then if we go back in... If we go back in, we kind of have to wait until Anju's done with her work day. She really can't talk to us until there's like potentially no more guests at the end. So we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of chill for a little bit until it gets like um, closer to midnight, and we're kind of just gonna follow her for a second. So you know she's hanging out over there. Uh, we're just gonna watch her. I'm really good. I'm really good. This is uh, this is my favorite side quest in Majora's Mask. So I'm like so excited to show it to you guys. <clears throat> I did look to see if there was some kind of like mod or something that we could cheat skipping some of these like longer periods like this, but um, I didn't find one. I don't think there's a way to do it on the um, N64 version uh, on original hardware or emulated either way. I don't think there's a way. So we just wait. Jacob, you were you used to stream, right? I feel like I haven't seen you stream in a while. Or am I making that up? Am I making that up that you're also a streamer? Patiently, yes. You have to have patience for this quest. You have to have a lot of patience. Just like um Anju has. Patience and faith. No, you're right. Okay. Have you just not you just not been streaming lately? Okay, so now. She comes around here and um, and she says it's 8.30 p.m. And, at, and the Stockpot Inn will now be locking the door. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so she's closing up basically. So she comes around and closes up um, every day at 8.30. Or she walks around at 8 and then leaves at, at 8.30. Let's follow her and see where she goes. On you. Streaming again soon? Oh, really, really, really? What will you be streaming? So let's follow her. Let me give you a shout out. Everybody go follow Jacob um, for his return to streaming. And then she goes into her room. So she's going in there. She's going to take a little nappy poo. Um, she's tired. She, I know she told me she was going to meet me at night, but she needs at least a little bit of a nap so that she can sleep somewhat. So she's going to go take a little nap. No, you're amazing. Now, 
now we have to wait for her to come back out after her nap. Link can stay up for three days because he's young. <laughs> he's young, but Andrew's an adult. Okay. She's 25. She can't do that shit. <laughs> I don't know how old she's supposed to be. I don't know how old Andrew and Kafei are supposed to be other than they're, they're supposed to be like adults, you know, like young adults. Valorant, Overwatch, League of Legends might restart Stardew on PC. You should absolutely restart Stardew on PC because you can mod it and stuff. Oh, Stardew is so fun. That's what we do for our community days. Um, I love it. Let's get together and hang out with the girls and, and farm. Do some farming. We're raising chickens. We talk about mayonnaise. It's awesome. Will you do a crowd con uh, crowd control Zelda one day? Oh my god, baby. <laughs> that would be funny. Okay, so Anju, she's done with her nap. She's um she's up. She's getting ready to come meet me. So we gotta wait for her to walk back there. I gotta go so far on console, but I'd restart with y'all. <laughs> we're on, for our community farm, we're on like uh, year two. We just started year two recently. And I'm very, very excited about Haunted Chocolatier. Like, I hope that that comes out within the next couple of years. Um, so we kind of have like a new thing, but similar. Because I love Stardew, but I've been playing Stardew for years. All right, so now, Anju is back here. Let's talk to her. I'm so sorry to trouble you late at night. It's about him, Cafe. I received a letter from him. Strange, isn't it? Getting a letter from a missing person. But there's absolutely no mistaking it's from him. It's clear to me. Please. Here is my letter. Please put this in the post box. When this is delivered and he receives my letter, you should be able to meet him. Please tell him that Anju's waiting for him. And please, after you've seen him, tell me how he looked. I'm scared. I, I, I can't go. Can I ask this of you? Yes, you can, Anju. Thank you very much. All right, we got letter to cafe. Um, we have to put it in the mailbox. Yes, we made an important promise. Please mail it immediately in the morning. All right, so once you talk to her, she goes to bed for reals. So now we're going to go back out of the inn. And there's our friend outside. I'm sorry, Link Goro. The wind has gotten damp, Goro. Tomorrow is rain, Goro, Goro, Goro. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my dude. I'm so sorry. All right, so we are actually going to go... We are going to go through this door, actually. Back to South Clocktown. Yeah, I have lots of farms I play on Stardew. Lots of them. Okay, so then what we're going to do, actually, is just skip. We're going to skip to the next morning. There's nothing else to do on night one. Uh, yes, skip to dawn of the second day. Forty-eight hours remain. That was a those were that was required event, by the way. That nighttime one we just did. You have to go see her like that. And then this is required as well. You have to put um, the mail in a mailbox. It really doesn't matter which mailbox. Um, I like to put it in this one because it's the first one that the postman goes to on his route. Um, but you can put it in any mailbox and it will work. All right, so it's going to be delivered this afternoon to Ching. All right, so then um, let's go be creepy and actually follow the mailman around. So you have to put the mail in the mailbox. You have to do it before 9 a.m., because that is when the mailman will come out and he'll start doing his route. You played this a few times, maybe. <laughs> maybe a few times. Yeah, this is a 100% run. I'm trying to show off everything, everything in this game. And this is the end, um, by the way. Like this, we're gonna do this quest and then the, the last thing to do in the game is like the ending of it. So we are almost done. We are almost at 100%. It's crazy. But this game has been um, been so good. I've really, really enjoyed um, sharing it with you guys and showing it to you guys. 
And I don't know if this is true, but I think I have one of the most complete playthroughs of this game, or I will when I have it finished. I don't know if that's true. Maybe someone has a more complete one, but I think I'll have the most complete one. Unless there's another that literally shows everything. <laughs> Which is what I've tried to do. Because the story in this game is so dense and so rich. Um, and it really culminates in this quest here. Like, this quest is the highlight of the game. It's everything. So you don't have to follow the postman around. Really, like, that part is not needed. Um, you just have to put the letter in there and then meet back up with him when he delivers the letter, which I'll show that too, but I want to show you, like, what he does because it's going to be important for later. He'll come out. He should come out in just a minute at nine. I'm pretty sure. He comes out. Yeah, there he goes. So he's going to walk around to every mailbox in Clocktown. Let's follow him. He's kind of a speedy little guy, but that's okay because we got our bunny ears on. Hello, sir. If you try to talk to him, this is what happens. I'm currently on the job. If I stop to talk, it will disrupt my schedule. Okay. I'm not trying to disrupt your schedule, my dude. I actually want you to be on time. So there he goes. He gets my letter. Or Anju's letter to Cafe. Then he goes to North Clock Town. And there's a mailbox here, too. Come on, Mr. Postman. You can see, like, he's carrying the letter. Which I think is, like, a cute little touch. Why he doesn't put it in his bag, I don't know. It's probably easier to animate him carrying um, than, you know, putting it in a bag. But that's what he does. And then he comes to this mailbox. There's two mailboxes in this part. And it always makes that little ching sound whenever he talks to the mailbox. So you can see when he got Cafe's letter to Anju, he just literally got it out of the mailbox and gave it to Anju. Now there's no mailbox in this area, but this is where he lives. So now he's going to go in there. And, um, we can go in and say hello to him. But he's sleeping. There was only one letter today. It's so sad, but I shall deliver it perfectly. Okay. So he's promising to deliver the letter. So he's going to get up and do that in a little bit. I think we actually can follow him to the next part, too. So other than putting the letter in the mailbox, like following him around, that's all optional. What you have to do is be at the next spot by 310. So we're just going to wait with him. We're going to follow him to the next spot. <clears throat> it looks like this place is about to close. Let's go outside. Okay. 
Why is his bed so big? <laughs> uh, he's a very violent sleeper. Okay, so he kicked us out because it was time for him to go on his route again. So he's gonna he's gonna take his route again. Uh, he's a very violent sleeper. He needs lots of room, otherwise he'll fall off the bed. <laughs> you can see he's a very active person. All right. So he's going this way. Oh, he's going this way. Where is he going? Under the jugglers. Okay, now he's back here. Oh, he's coming across here. Now he isn't checking any mailboxes. All right, so he's coming up here into the laundry pool area. This is the same area that um, Anju was crying during this time before, but oh, she's not here. She's not here crying right now. So let's see what happens. We're gonna go, we're just gonna go stand in the corner right here. We're gonna, we're gonna hide in the corner. And see what's up. Oh, there he is. Oh, he rang the bell. So he rang that bell right there. How'd he know to do that? Oh my gosh, it's the guy again. It's Cafe. All right, so he is delivering the letter to Cafe. I pretty sure they don't have any dialogue there, at least I've never been able to trigger it. So while Cafe is distracted, you run into his little hideout right here. You run into his little hideout, this door has been locked this whole time, um, but you can run in here now. And, uh, and yeah, I'm in your house, bitch. Now you have to talk to me. I'm breaking and entering, you can't ignore me anymore. That's basically what I'm saying. And there he is. Hey, what's up, my dude? How's it going? I'm, uh, I broke in your house. So now you have to talk to me. That's the rules of video games. Green hat, green clothes. Andre wrote about you in her letter. It seems you're looking for cafe. Can you keep a secret? Andrew trusted you. I shall also trust you. <gasps> oh my god, you guys, it's cafe. I am Cafe. Bruh. What? Why are you so young? What the heck is Anju and Kremia up to having a crush on you? That's really fucking weird. Let's find out. The Cafe we're looking for is an adult. When I look at you, I just see a child. I was turned into this by a strange imp wearing a mask, but I'm not hiding because I look this way. When I was turned into this, I went to see the great fairy in the shrine near the north gate. But on the way, my precious mask, a wedding ceremony mask, was stolen from me by some prancing man with a grinning face. Well, well, you're just careless. You're like my partner. <laughs> Before my wedding ceremony, I was quite happy. I was targeted because of what I'd been turned into. <laughs> he just, just ignores, ignores Tattle right there. Or tail. <laughs> oh my, I pity you. I know Anju's worried, but I can't go out yet. I made a promise to her that I would bring the wedding mask and greet her. This pendant, give it to Anju. Do 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 do. Okay. Yeah, he ain't got no time for bullying. He's not. A, he's not a child by choice. Okay. Okay. That's not what's going on here. He is. He is a full ass adult. Okay. He's just short. <laughs> <laughs> He's just short. Uh, he's turned into a child by Skull Kid, obviously. Okay, though you may not understand these grown-up matters, you should probably take the pendant to Anju anyway. Keep what we just talked about a secret from everyone. Okay, cafe was added to your notebook. And yes, all right. So another thing you can do while in here is you can look through this little hole. Oh, here, here he goes. 
Things that get stolen in town always make their way to the curiosity shop. I'm waiting for that to happen. Stand on the crate and peek into the hole. That's what I was trying to do. I just didn't realize I needed to talk to you first. From here, I check on the curiosity shop's customers. Okay, so Cafe has a hole where he can see straight into the curiosity shop. So you can see that. He can see what's going on in here. All right. That guy will definitely reappear. I'll be waiting when it happens. All right, so you can talk to him inside of his house anytime between 4.10 and 6 p.m., but I don't know why you wouldn't just do it as ASAP because you have to like sneak in here and all that stuff. But anyway, you, you do have until 6 p.m. to talk to him for that required event. Um, looking into the hole for the curiosity shop, that's not required. So the next thing though is, so you have between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m to do this next piece, which requires us going back and talking to Anju again. So we're going back to the stock pot in and we're gonna talk to Anju. Oh, did you meet him? Okay. Thank you very much. Yay, she's so happy. Okay, so we give her the pendant. If you give her the pendant, then she will not leave an, on night three. She won't leave and go to Romani's like we saw. She will stay. Okay, so now that we've gotten her to stay, that's all the things that we need to do um, during day two. So let's skip over to night two. All of this day two stuff was required, by the way. Um, none of this was optional except for looking in the hole for the curiosity shop. And we didn't have to follow the mailman around exactly, but we did have to go to the laundry pool um, by uh, 310. Okay, yes, night of the second day. Okay, 36 hours remain. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into the stock pot in. And we're gonna do a couple of little optional scenes for night two. There really is nothing you have to do during night two, but since we have the key, we can witness a scene in here. So if you remember back when we first went in this room, we checked this and we saw this. What a ramshackle inn. Is this room first class? You can hear whoever's next door for crying out loud. Well, whatever, we're staying for free, so we can't expect much. So we're gonna wait until um, 9.30 p.m. And we've got a little optional scene that we can view through this crack. So to get this optional scene, you have to both have gotten the room key and you have to have given the pendant to Anju. So basically what we're gonna witness, um, we can witness this version of it and then we can imagine what would have gone down in this version of the conversation if we had not been involved and not gone and given Anju the pendant. So we'll watch the scene and then I will explain what it is that likely happened um, if we don't get involved because the scene still happens. It just goes down a very different way. So we're waiting until 9.30. So you can do this anytime between 9.30 and 11 p.m. If you get past 11 p.m., it's not gonna work anymore. Something that's so funny is like, I got this room from the dude. There's two beds in here. So, you know, what's kind of fucked up is that like Link takes this room away from the Goron, but the Goron still could have slept in here. They could have shared. They could have totally shared because um, there's two beds. <laughs> so, you know, regardless of Link not really using the room, except to go do this little spy thing and get some rupees, like the Goron still could have had one of these beds, but Link just stands there. He just stands there instead of saying, hey, um, there's two beds in that room. So actually like we can share. <laughs> he just stands there like a dope, um, doesn't even offer it. And the guy sleeps outside. So true, truly bad things that Link does. Oh my God, they were roommates. They were totally roommates. Link and Link Goro. Link X, Link Goro, five ever. OTP. <clears throat> 
All right, it's almost 9.30. As soon as the sun gets down to the bottom of that little triangle, or not triangle, diamond there, then we can do this and see the scene. All right, here we go. Now, if we check it, um, you should be able to hear something. Yes. Okay, Anju, we're leaving in the evening for the ranch. Kremia will take us in. She's your best friend, right? I wonder if Cafe's really at Kremia's place. Oh, that was Anju's line. I wonder if Cafe's really at Kremia's place. If Cafe is there, your mother will give him a smack. Besides, think about Kremia. She needs to strengthen up from a part. She needs strength from a partner and business support from Madame Aroma. If Cafe really has run off with Kremia, she'll get both. Please don't be sad. How happy could you possibly be marrying a man who runs off when he's about to be married? I we would just make your life unhappy, just like your mother's. But in the letter, he said he would definitely come back. Come back to what? Won't this town be crushed beneath the moon the morning after tomorrow? Forget about that letter. For now, just try to survive. Everything else will follow. Yes, mother. Thank you. Okay, so this conversation happens whether Link interferes or not, but you can easily imagine a version of this conversation where Anju doesn't really argue because she didn't get the letter, and she, I mean, well, she got the letter, but then she didn't get the pendant. So she really can't, like, prove that Confe is going to come or not. So you can see, like, Anju's mother is there trying to convince her, and without that pendant that you just gave her, there's no reason for Anju not to think that her mother might be right. Because she might be. She really might. It does sound like Kremia makes more sense for Cafe to get married to. And unless you have spoken with Cafe, you don't really know that like he actually is truly in love with Anju and he wouldn't choose Kremia. But you don't know that unless you've snuck in and talked with him in his room. So there is another optional scene that we can see. Remember, Cafe can also see into the um, the curiosity shop right here. And uh, you can actually witness this scene. It's optional, just like the other scene we just saw, between 12.30 and 1 a.m. So we're gonna wait for that. So we have one more optional scene. Sewing doubts, huh? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there's doubt there. So a couple of things that we know have happened is that a month ago, Cafe disappeared, okay? He made his mask early and he fucked off to we don't know where. That was a month ago. Skull Kid, Skull Kid showed up much less than a month ago, okay? Skull Kid showed up just like a couple of days ago, right? Because he showed up right before Link showed up, right? Because he harassed Link. He was in the forest harassing Link with Epona and then like Link chased him here, right? So Skull Kid's not been here for a month. Skull Kid's been here for maybe a few days. And then Cafe is turned into a child, right? Cafe is turned into a child and that's why he continues to hide. But I don't think being turned into a child is initially what made him leave, okay? Because no one else talks about these problems that Clocktown and the surrounding areas are facing going on for over a month. They talk about them as if they've just started the past few days, all right? So I don't think that that's why he left. It's just why he didn't come back. So there's reason to doubt here for the other characters if you've not talked to Cafe. So here's the, the scene. 100. Don't be such a rupee pincher, you miser. 200. Well, well, don't I just offer you even less? And you know, this is a bomb, this is the bomb shops. How about if I tell them all about you? All right, fine, I'll take it, but you're guilty too. Don't be a fool. A seller of stolen goods is just a middleman who's trying to provide his customers with good products. Look, I know nothing. If it comes to me, I buy it. I'm a charitable organization that helps people in need. I, I understand. Then the total is, it's 50 now, so there you go. What, you said 100. Oh, so you don't want me to take it off your hands? Wait, that it's a deal. It's a deal. Okay, so you can witness him selling the bomb bag. You can't witness that scene um, if you save the old lady. 
So what does that tell us? We cannot uh, save the old lady and save Anju and Cafe at the same time. So something to consider. Oh my God, I do the song of soaring. I didn't mean to do the song of soaring. I meant to do the song of double time. Oh my gosh, stop doing that. Okay, just kidding. So that's all the stuff that you could potentially do on night two. So we're gonna go ahead and skip over to day three. Yes, dawn of the final day. Twenty-four hours remain. All right. So now, the next event is required. So the next thing we have to do is is something that you have to do to make the quest work. Oh, wrong way. And that is going to take place in the laundry pool over here at 1 p.m. So you have between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. on the third day to do this. If you try to come here early before 1 p.m., it says it's locked. Okay. Well, that's just convenient, isn't it? That's just convenient. So we have to wait now till 1 p.m. for someone to come and unlock that door. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. So we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. There's really, there's nothing else. There's no optional scenes before then. Um, so this quest requires persistence and patience. We're just gonna wait till one. Ugh, I'm out of water. I need more water, but I don't want to pause the game. We're gonna wait till one while everything rumbles very scarily. The rest of the stuff that we are going to do is all required. So the optional scenes that we viewed were just all on the first two days. Everything that you do on the third day and the third night is, um, is required. Can I run and get water and get back by one? Well, we have between one and six. I think I can. Okay. Listen to the speedy music. I'm gonna go get water. I will be right back. We, uh, okay, it's only nine. We have plenty of time. I got a LaCroix, too. It's a mango. It's a mango LaCroix. <laughs> the poor frog. Froggy, I would help you out, but it's winter. It's winter in the, the Goron land, so there's no, no reason. Alarith, how are you doing? Are you having an amazing weekend? Yes, I love LaCroix. I love LaCroix. Um, I like most flavors of LaCroix. Um, the only ones I really have that I have not liked is um, coconut. There's a sakura blossom flavor, which is cherry flavored, like cherry cherry, not cherry blossom flavored. Anyway, it's gross. Um, those two I haven't liked. Uh, peach pear, I'm not a big fan of that one either. Um, while we're waiting, let me share a big win. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Today I cleaned out my closet for the first time in, in at least eight years. Holy crap. And I have so much stuff to donate now. I'm going to take it to the donation bin next week. That sounds amazing, Koneko. So you ba basically Marie kondo your closet. Eight years. That's a long time. I only drink the unflavored one. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that one, actually. I don't like that one either, but I kind of forget it exists. I love donation halls. I try, um, try to regularly like go through stuff and um, and take it to the Goodwill if it's still in good condition. If it's not in good condition, then I throw it away, you know? 
because so I don't know how it is in your country, but here, usually when you take donations, you'd take them to like the Goodwill or Salvation Army. Those are kind of the two big ones that'll accept stuff like that. And um, Goodwill is the one close to me. And I know they don't wash that shit. So if it's nasty or ripped up or like torn up or whatever, like they're not gonna wash or repair it. So there's no reason to take it. But I love that. I love doing stuff like that. I actually have a couple of shirts in my closet that I need to to get rid of um, for one reason or another. Like if I know I'm not, if I'm never gonna wear it, like if I haven't, if there's something I have and I have not worn it in two years, then I there's no point in me keeping it. Like that's how I feel when it comes to clothes. I'm the kind of person who keeps clothes until they fall apart, but if something gets too small, I generally won't remember to donate it. So I took everything that's too small. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I like to wear clothes until they fall apart too, but there are some things that just like, I got them and they just they just don't look good or they're not appropriate for work and I, I got them for some other purpose or whatever and so there's like no reason. Um, I also donated my Harry Potter shirts because I can't in good conscience wear them anymore. Mood, I know what you mean. I figured they'd be Lazy Day shirts, but I have more comfy Lazy Day shirts, yes. Them flavor of liqueur is the best. I just want bubbles and CO2. Oh my God, you're so cute. <laughs> I do closet cleanings yearly. That's how often I feel like you should do them, but it doesn't always happen, right, Jacob? Okay, so now it's one. And if we come up here, we can talk to this guy. And this is who opened the door. So there's not just a peephole. Like clearly he can get in here somehow and he opened the door from the back. It's the curiosity shop guy. So let's talk to him and see what's up. Um, Huh, you're the green hat kid? I got a message from Cafe. Now, Cafe, I've known him since he was a real little, but when he showed up looking all young in that little brat body, I didn't know what I was seeing. All it took was one glance at the keton mask he was carrying for me to realize that I was looking at my old friend. I gave him that mask a long time ago when he was just a little Cafe. Didn't know he would keep it that well for so long. I'm not sure why, but I wanna give this to you. Okay, so this is how you get the keton mask. Um, it's a keepsake. And, uh, and it doesn't really do much, but you can get a heart piece with it. So we're going to do that. Now, Cafe, he says he wants you to take this to his mother. This is what you have to get from this guy to continue the quest. You got to get the express mail to mama. Okay. So who's Cafe's mother? Madame Aroma. Okay. We have to take this to Madame Aroma. So you have to know where she's going to be on the third day. All right. A customer came to my shop last night. Now, Cafe sees him and Cafe's color just changes and he goes running after the guy. The guy's a regular, a greedy thief named Sakon. Okay, so that scene that we saw where Sakon comes into the curiosity shop to sell the bomb bag, the part that we didn't see is, remember, Cafe can see through that little hole. So he saw like, Sakon's there, bitch, I'm going. And he ran, he ran after Sakon, okay? I think he's from Akana Village. Okay, so. Basically, Cafe is now um, stalking Sakon. Now, before we um, switch over to night three, we are actually going to do the Keton Mask heart piece because it's really quick. Um, and I might need a few tries to get it right. So if we don't, if we don't do it right, I might have to try it again. But anyway, we're gonna try. We're gonna try. <laughs> uh, I'll show you guys what to do. So. Uh, you probably noticed that there's several places where the bushes run away from you here in uh, in like the area, in the world. So if you go to those places where the bushes run away from you and you put on the Keton mask, okay? And you destroy, destroy, destroy. Yeah, slash some bushes, boo, boo, boo. slashy, slashy, yeah. Okay, oh my gosh, it's Keton, a real Keton, what? I found two old vests that were discolored, but otherwise still good. They're white, so I'm going to try to salvage them by bleaching. Oh, that's a good idea if they're white. Um, if they take well, I can keep them, so I really hope it works. Yeah. Well, and if you can bleach them, then you could dye them like another color if you wanted to. I totally didn't need multiple tries for this HP hard piece. Nope. <laughs> multiple tries flash me. Yeah. It depends on what questions he asks me. Let's find out. Okay. Anyways, um, this is what you do. Hee hee ho! Hello, child! If you're attempting to fool me, it is impossible. We ketons can recognize our own by the sheen of our tails. But you're a good child. Let me put you to the test. Answer me this. Pick one of three choices. What is the name of the festival that is to be held in Clocktown? 
Okay, it is the Carnival of Time. We got a ride. Answer me this. Pick one of three choices. What is the name of Andrew's father? Okay, Andrew's father is Tortoise. Okay, it's Tortoise. Answer me this. Pick one of three choices. How many balloons does Ro does Romani, the girl at the ranch, use during practice? Fuck, I don't know. Um, oh. Are they not balloons? I thought they were balloons. Maybe the answer is she doesn't use balloons. It's definitely, like, the targets that you have to hit for practice. It's a lot more than just one or two, so it must be... They must not call them balloons. I guess if she doesn't use balloons. Oh, no! Hee hee ho ho! Your training is insufficient. Come back and try again, child. Okay. I... Can I... Can I just... Oh, my God. Yeah. Can I just walk out and back in and try again? I'm guessing one. Yeah, it's got to be one. If it's not if it's not none, it's got to be one. Okay, let's put the keton mask back on. Can I just do it again right now? First try ruined, yeah. Uh yeah, he doesn't come back. Shoot. I guess I have to wait till the next cycle or go somewhere else. So I think another one Let's see if we can do the Romani one. Because there's another one on Milk Road. I might have to wait for a whole new cycle. Okay, let's find out. I did not actually expect to fuck it up, so... was not prepared for this. <laughs> Okay, no, okay, I do get another try at the other at the other ones. Okay. So here we go. Attempt number two. Hee hee ho ho, hello child. If you're attempting to fool me, it is impossible. Yes. I know, I know, I know. I'm not trying to fool you, I'm just trying to get your heart piece. Okay, is Tingle the map maker left handed or right handed? Oh my gosh, thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Um, I don't know if they take well to dying and also I like them as white vests. Oh, okay. Um, but we'll have to see if they take well to bleaching anyway. If they don't, they have to be thrown out. Yeah. Is Tingle right-handed or left-handed? Left-handed, right-handed, ambidextrous. What do you guys think? I really, I, this is another one I really don't know. I never imagined a Keton with the voice she's giving. Oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Should I choose left-handed, right-handed, or ambidextrous? I don't know. I've never paid attention. I know Link is left-handed. You're Googling it? Oh my gosh, Koneko, thank you. I'm sure there's like there's like a Keton um, page that has all of this, because there is like a, a Zelda dungeon wiki. Left, no. You think Tingle's left-handed as well, just like Link? I defer to Google. Okay, well, we're gonna let Koneko Google it. I keep, I, I wasn't expecting to get so many questions I didn't know. Probably ambidextrous. I don't know. I don't know. And yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for you, Koneko. It's okay. Go to the Googles. I don't want to fail again, because then I don't have memorized where the other um, ones are. I don't have memorized where the other ones are. He's right-handed? Okay. Right-handed. Yay, you were right. Hello, Karen. Three-tail Kitsune? Still young, but old enough to be knowledgeable. Yes, exactly. Okay, here we go. Next one. How many cow figurines are there in Clocktown? There's 10. I'm pretty sure there's 10. Okay, 10 is an answer. It's 10. Yes. Okay, one of the three choices. Um, what's the name of the singer in the Zora band, the Indiegogos? Okay, it's uh, it's Lulu. Ruto's an answer. That's funny. Um, pick one of three choices. How many balloons does the Romani girl use at the ranch during her practice? Okay, this is the one we fucked up before. It's got to be one, right? It's got to be one. Um, yeah, I don't, if it's not none, it's got to be one. It was one. Okay. Pick one of three choices. Oh, one. Okay. Oh, Koneko, you must have the Googles up. Okay. What is the name of the song that Romani, the girl at the ranch, teaches you? It's a Pona song, right? She teaches me a Pona song. Yes. Ah, oh, we did it. Hee hee ho ho. Good. Very good. Take this prize. 
Yay, we got a piece of heart. Okay. Sweet, we did it. My Zelda trivia is not very good. Well, luckily it's trivia about this game specifically. So like, um, it's all good, it's all good. Okay, where was I want to go next? I think that's everything. Yeah. Uh, okay. It is Song of Soaring time now for reals. Okay, so we're going to um, Ikana. I grew up on this game in Ocarina of Time, yeah. The best, N64 Zelda games are the best Zelda games. I pulled up the Zeldapedia page for Keton's trivia. I knew there must be one. I knew there must be one. Okay, so we are gonna jump down here. And you know, if you come here earlier in the cycle, you'll see um, Sekon the Thief running around in circles, and he asks to borrow your sword over here. You guys remember that from the Akana episode? Um, but we're actually gonna run over here. And if we go behind this rock, oh my gosh, it's Cafe! Hey, dude! I found him. Green Hat Boy. He's using this place as his safe house for keeping his stolen goods. Apparently his name is Sakan. He came to the shop last night and I followed him. His storage for the things he's stolen is on the other side of this rock door. Only Sakan can open it. The only way in is to wait for Sakan to arrive. I'll wait. I've made a promise to Anju. He will show up. Okay, so we want to hide with him. So um, you don't want to, you want to stand like basically where he is like this so that Sakan doesn't see you. If you don't stand in the right spot, Sakan will see you and then he'll never open the door. So to make sure that we don't fuck it up all the way at the end, I'm going to save. We're going to save our state. Um, but yeah, that's what you do. Okay, so then what we're going to do is skip to the, the third night. Yes. Night of the final day. And we wait. We wait for Sakan to run his happy little ass um, up that little path right there and open the door for us. But yeah, you have to stand behind this larger rock. If you stand just in this general area and you're more like behind that smaller rock to the left, he will see you. Okay, so you really do have to stand like in this same kind of like eye line next uh, in front of um, in front of cafe here. And I have had it glitch out and he see me in spots that he's not supposed to see me before, but uh, but he shouldn't see you if you stand right here. All right, then he opens the door. And while it's open, you have to skedaddle inside. Okay. Oh. I'm going to slow down time. Oh, nothing happened. Wait, let's walk back outside. Ah, oh, because it's locked. Hang on, that's why we load the state. Let's load the state. Okay, we're gonna do this right this time. Okay, we're skipping. Song of double time, yes. Night of the final day. And then we're gonna slow down time. And he's gonna run very slowly, but that's okay, because then we'll get more time inside. Yeah, right? Uh, yes. Well, you can, you could just, I could have done it without slowing time, but I just want to make sure that I'm not like 
playing the same sequences over and over. Because on stream, I think that's kind of boring. But that's the whole thing with this quest. Like, this quest takes the whole three days. If you mess up any one step, you have to start over. You have to start over. And that's what makes this quest, like, so challenging and so rewarding when you're playing it, you know, as a kid when you're first playing the game and you don't really know it that well. But I couldn't remember. So that's why we saved the state, because there's this this little bit right here is kind of easy to mess up. There he comes running up the running up the hill. If I only could make a deal with God. Not only that, but it's a quest with multiple offshoots that you can only do if you abandon the main one. Yeah, exactly. Because you kind of have to do, like, you can't do this at the same time that you save the lady, the bomb bag lady, right? And then you have this version that we're doing right now. And we're going to do the next version after, like the other way. Like, this, this whole quest, like... It really proves to you like you can't save everyone. There is no like run of Majora's Mask where you can go through, beat all the temple bosses, save everybody, make them all happy. Like it is literally impossible to make everyone happy. And that's the whole problem. That's the whole problem. Skull Kid has just come and messed everything up and you can't fix it. You can't. For real, we are learning a lot of life lessons. Okay. We're back to where we were. He opened the door. And we gotta run into. Get in there. Look, there's a mask there. It's the sun mask. <gasps> oh no. Now I've done it. <gasps> Step on that switch. What? Are you telling us what to do? It's some setup where if the door stays open only while the switch is pressed. Okay, so we stand on the switch. Yeah, we got totally Indiana jones And then we control Cafe for a little bit. There should be some device in this room that also opens the door. Oh, the mask! Okay, we gotta move fast. We gotta move fast at these puzzles. He's trying to pull it out of our reach and make his escape. We've gotta hurry! That's no good. This isn't the switch. Go check that room. There should be some sort of mechanism. Please, there's no time. I don't like him, but is there a choice? Should we help him? Not moving ahead in the face of danger. When you know is for the better is just like tail. That's it, let's go. Forgot how to do this one. Oh no, I need to push this. Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot what I'm supposed to do. Hang on, let me think. Uh it's like this. I might be taking too long and have to redo it. We'll find out. <laughs> think, Karen! <laughs> I got it, I got it. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do.
Okay, attack me so I can kill you. Oh my god, it's too late. I'm too late. We're gonna have to start it. We're gonna have to start it again. Yep. I knew it! I knew it! Okay. It's okay. We can see this scene and then we'll start it. We'll start it again. Yes, my security system's impenetrable. We're locked in. I'm sorry. You got caught up in all this. If you can get out, then do it. Andrew's already fleeing to Kremia's ranch. You did great. She'll understand. Come on, let's go. Play your ocarina and get us outside. Let him be alone. Okay, so he's now trapped. He is trapped. He literally can't get out. Um, so that's sad. <clears throat> you can get all the way to here and like totally fuck it up like I just did. Anyways, we have the power of save states, so. <sighs> I forgot what order to move those stupid blocks on that part. Anyway, we're going to do it right this time. We're going to do it right this time. Come on, Mr. Sakon. Be running up that hill. Yeah, I pushed the the one above the yellow. I've pushed to the left and then I can run. Okay. Ooh. I got it this time. <laughs> Ooh, for real. Ooh, for real. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We got it this time. So while we're kind of waiting for him to run up the hill, I just want to point out something else. Like, if you don't show up to help Cafe, then he gets in there and he can't even get past the first puzzle. So basically, he ends up trapped in there with Sakan. And depending on how evil you think this thief is, would depend on, like, what you think happens to Cafe at that point. Like, he probably does survive the moon crashing because they're in this like rock formation. So they're probably fine. But like, do they get back out? Is the shockwave from the moon so bad that they can't like get back out and the two of them are just trapped in there? Um, do they get back out? But he finds out that like, you know, everything's gone. There's the question of like whether Anju and her family really even survive at Romani's ranch like they might but we really don't know so um it is the ultimate tragedy I think for Cafe to make it this far to find out what Sakan has done and uh and to not to not make it for Link to not even be there all right here we go we do the scene again we're gonna do it right this time the stupid wolfo is usually what makes me mess this up if I mess it up. I think Sakan is evil, but more opportunistic, not sadistic, yeah. So I think they're just kind of like trapped in there together. Which is still like really sad. Okay, we got this. Yeah, he reminds you of Tail, I get it. Oh my gosh, kill it.
got it. Woo, did it that time. I got the sun mask back. We helped Cafe, yay. There's still time. I must get back to town. All right, so he runs back off that way. Um, he disappears off this screen though, technically, like in the game mechanic, like it looks like he runs all the way Yay, back out to Clock Town. Thank you, thank you, thank you, oh, we got it. It looks like he runs all the way back to Clock Town, but he doesn't. So you, um, oh. So you have to meet back up with him. So we are actually going to fly to Clock Town. We're going to fly to Clock Town. And we do have something we need to do there other than meeting up with Cafe. So we're going to do that. And that is over here at the milk bar. So let's get out our Romani mask. Remember the curiosity shop guy gave us a letter, a special delivery to Mama. So let's go give it to her. Oh my gosh, do the speak, there we go. Oh dear, are you all right with not fleeing? It looks like this is it for the town, you know. You saw the moon, didn't you? It's gotten so huge. All the townsfolk have fled, you should flee too, far away. Okay, so that's what she says normally, but if you talk to her with the cafe mask on, you can tell her you found him. Oh dear, you're the one searching for cafe. How is it? Have you found him? Well, I have some news for you, lady. Oh dear, Priority Mail. This this is from Cafe, correct? Correct? Wonderful. You really are an expert, yes. Yes, I'm sorry, my thanks. Yes, it is your job after all. And this is the final bottle, okay? This is where you get the final bottle. It has Chateau Romani in it, but, uh, but this is where you get the final bottle of the game. Yes. I'm sorry, at this point in time, I can give you only something like this. Actually, I wanted to get this to you sooner, really. <laughs> so that's what you get from her. And you can do that at that point. Now, Cafe will appear right there at um, when there's like 150 left on this clock. And then what he'll do is he'll run over here, he'll run up to this room right here where Anju is waiting. So we are going to come here and we are going to um, comfort Anju while she's waiting. I've decided to wait for him. I've made my promise. I'm fine with this. I believe him. So we're going to wait with her and we're going to see what happens. <clears throat> she just told this dude, you're off work, go get drunk for real. It's <laughs> exactly what she said. So we're just going to wait. Um, when there's, like I said, when there's 150 left, Cafe enters Clock Town and then he goes into the stock pot in and he should appear in this room when there is about 130 left. So let's see if he shows up. So I just want to imagine the scenario for you that what we had before where we messed up. When we messed up when we got stuck in, in Sakan's um, hideout. Why that is so tragic is when Cafe gets out in that scenario Andrew wasn't at Romani actually she was here she was here and she's definitely crushed so in that timeline Cafe likely doesn't die because he's in the hideout where he's protected by rock all around him he may be trapped for a while like he may really struggle and have some have some trouble but he probably doesn't die like him and Sakan probably don't fight or whatever. He doesn't die. But Anju definitely does. Anju definitely does. She's not at Romani, where they can potentially reunite again. She's here, and they can't reunite again, because she's gone. And in that timeline, I do believe that Cafe, after some tragedy, ends up marrying Kremia, because they've both lost Anju. And they both are more likely to actually survive 
in this scenario. So, um, what's sad is that if you don't do the Anjou side of this quest ahead of now, you can imagine Cafe showing up in an empty room. Yes, so that's another possible timeline. If you only do the Cafe events, right, and you don't give Anjou the pendant to where she's waiting, if you skip that part, then what? Then you go help Cafe. Then he shows up here to know Anju, and he then does not survive, but Anju survives likely because she's at Romani. So all of the potential plot lines for this are very sad. In reality, the happiest plot line for Anju and Cafe is when you don't interfere at all because then Cafe goes after Sakan and is likely trapped in the rocks. So he survives. And then Anju goes to Romani Ranch and again, likely survives. And then they can reunite afterwards. And yes, there is no more clock town anymore. The economy is destroyed. They probably have to move and go somewhere else, but they don't die. They don't die. The moon does not get them. So you're doing all of these things to help Anju and Cafe reunite and see each other. But yeah, the happiest thing for you to do is to actually not interfere in their love lives. Now, at this point, I'm pretty sure even in the DS version, there's no way to speed it up. We just have to wait until it gets down to like 1.30. <clears throat> I can feel kind of agonizing waiting this long. I can't think of anything else in the game um, up to this point that requires you to like literally wait out almost the entire clock. Um, you can get the rupees out of there, I'm pretty sure, and like just take their life savings. <laughs> it's gonna get crushed anyway. They don't need the money. Um, so you can do that. But... Uh, I'm not going to. I don't need the money either. We have the 5,000 rupees and the heart piece from that, so. I think that this is why I think Majora's Mask has a way better story than Ocarina of Time. Yes. That's why, out of all the Zelda games, this is the one we're playing on my stream because this is the best story of any Zelda. Until, um, until I suppose, I know Tears of the Kingdom is very story heavy, which I've not played it, by the way. I'm sorry, I'm a Breath of the Wild hater, so I probably won't play it. Um, but until that game, Zelda plot lines were, you know, they were kinda, there was like plot there, but like, not this way. Not this way. And they really didn't do it again until Tears of the Kingdom. Like, the plot, usually, for a Zelda game, is very straightforward, and not that complicated. And they're just- that's just not really what they're known for. You know, they're known for having cool characters. But they're not really known for, like, overall telling a good story. Except for this one, of course, Majora's Mask. And it really is mostly because of this quest right here, this Anju and Cafe quest. So right now, um, Anju's mother and grandmother are over at Muramani Ranch without Anju. They went without her. Um, and Romani and Kremia are getting drunk on the Chateau Romani and waiting for the moon to fall. Simpler is usually way better for games like this, but goodness, this game story left an impression on me at least, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for the style of game that Zelda is, Typically you wouldn't, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't really need or want a big story. But I think for this game in particular, there was so much stress going on with the development team when they were making this game. And then in addition to that, the timeline was so rushed 
Well, I mean, that's really what was causing the stress, but the timeline was so rushed to make this game that they don't really have a lot of time to play test every little thing, so they have to make something very simple. Um, and how do you make it good while still being very simple, you know, mechanically? And, uh, and that's having a good plot. It's having a good plot. So that's what they did. And the devs have talked a lot about how, you know, during the time of development, because it was so rushed and there was crunch and all these things that they weren't seeing their families. And that makes its way everywhere into this game. Makes its way everywhere into this game. Um, there's, a, there's an interview about uh, some of the devs that were going to a wedding. They were at a wedding for their friend, several of them. And they're at the wedding thinking and talking about the game because there's so much crunch and there's so much deadline, you know. So they still made it to the wedding because that was important. But during the wedding, they weren't engaged in it. They were engaged in the game. So that's how we get the Anju and Cafe quest. That's how we get so much tragedy in the Anju and Cafe quest as well. It's from that experience that they were having while they were making the game. And I think that you just really feel it. That you just really feel it in this game. Everything the de developers were going through while they were making it. And you don't always get to experience that. And that's what makes this game so, like, so much feeling like art. Um, versus how much it feels like a game. Is because the devs really were able to pour their soul into it. In this way. All right, Cafe's gonna walk through that door any minute. Don't worry, Anju. I'm gonna wait with you until he gets here. He will show up. We believe in him. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is this game is really good. And I know, like, it gets a lot of love nowadays. But when it first came out, it did not get the love. So. But when I was a kid, I was telling people, this game is good, actually. You don't understand, this game is good, actually. And I couldn't really experience all the things at that age because I just wasn't, you know, good enough at video games. We didn't really have the internet to Google all the things that you couldn't figure out on your own. Um, but yeah, I still knew it was a good game. Oh, here he is. Here he is. I... I've met you before. What a familiar scent, long, long ago. Yes, we were still young. We made a promise, didn't we? The mask of the sun and the moon. We were to exchange them on the day of the Carnival of Time. Anju, I'm sorry I was late. Welcome home. There's so little time left. She doesn't even get to question what happened to him or why he's like this. She only has time to accept him. Tee hee, they're lovers, but they look like a mother and child. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <sighs> Let us exchange the promised mast. We've exchanged our oaths and become a couple. You are our witness. Please accept this mask. And there we go. We got the couple's mask. I don't think she wants to know what happened. All she wants is to stab him back. Yeah. So we got the couple's mask. Please take refuge. We're fine here. We shall greet the morning together. All right. So there we go. Now, all we can do is restart time. Leave them to their fate. <sighs> All right, we're going to save and return to dawn of the first day. Thank you guys for coming on that journey with me for 
what is the best quest in this game. And it's optional, you don't even have to do it to beat the game, but it's absolutely the best part of it. So, I know this part one has run a little long, but that's because I wanted to show you everything for this quest within one video. So with that being said, for those watching the recording on YouTube, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye and stop the recording. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on the Anju and Cafe quest, if you would share those with me. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.